What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at Tenor Colossus by Straight Ahead Samples. So if you're not really aware of this company and what they do, uh, they recently put out their Birth of the Trumpet, which is basically a jazz oriented trumpet library. And it really had ha has a revolutionary kind of technology in it where they call it a smart delay. And basically there's a bit of a delay for four beats. And then basically whatever MIDI performance you have in your DAW, it's going to replicate that. But after analyzing a bunch of details about the performance, like the speed of the notes, the velocity, and all of that, they sampled many, many round robins and many notes and takes for every single note. And so this results in a very convincing result. Now that's not to say that this is going to replace a live player. Of course not. But um, the technology is just getting better and better nowadays, and this company is um, really taking the jazz world by storm, I would say, in the sample library regard. So taking a look at Tenor Colossus, at the time of this recording, it is uh, at an intro price of 110.49, regular price 130. And some key features, which are essentially very similar to the Birth of the Trumpet, uh, professional jazz player, over 2,000 samples per note, Two microphone positions, which are which is actually pretty good, because by the way, this instrument is meant to be played as a soloistic instrument. So at the front of a mix, you know, as a featured um, instrument, uh, the smart delay technology, which we just talked about, analyzes uh, the details of your played phrase, works out the appropriate sample. So as a result, it needs a bit of time to kind of analyze, and then it, uh, you know, plays your performance for you. They have this reconstructed vibrato, which they call it, and then the standard articulations required of a saxophone player in the style. So legato, staccatos, falls, trips, uh, trills, scoops, glisses, and etc. So definitely check out the demos on their website if you'd like to. Uh, but let's just jump, jump in into uh, Logic. I'll show you a little bit of what this is actually capable of on the real-time setting, and then we'll look at the smart delay option and how that actually works into it. So the real time goes a little bit like this. By default, they load the legato, right? So you kind of have this performance. So by default, it loads up with this uh, sound, you know, this position, and it has a close position and a room mic position as well. I tend to stick with the close, and sometimes I like to put in a bit of the room, but generally the close sounds quite good on its own. And this instrument is also really nice in that it, it responds very well to mod wheels. So if I just play a note and uh, hear how soft it gets, we push it up. You hear that dynamic definitely comes up there, right? Um, so yeah, basically when you're playing in live, you're going to want to, you're going to want to basically variate, variate, is that a word? Um, variate your velocity along with playing the module at the same time. Cause it's, it's, it's quite a responsive instrument in that regard. And the legato sounds pretty good by default as is, um, but essentially the idea is, you know, when you turn on smart delay, it's going to analyze the performance in real time and take it a step further. So I'm just going to lower the glare here for a second. There we go. Um, and yeah, let's go through a few other articulations. So by default, we have the legato. Um, let's hear the staccato. One thing to keep in mind is that uh, these articulations are not polyphonic. Uh, like I'm just checking out these staccatos and staccatissimos, and I'm trying to play two notes at once, but it only gives me the one note at a time. So again, it's really meant to be like a soloistic player and not meant to be um, used as an, as an ensemble instrument for the most part. That's tongued, forte piano.
Okay, so that's just a walkthrough of the different articulations. And keep in mind, I'm not using the mod wheel for any of that so far. I'm pl basically playing all the articulations live. Um, just, just to give you a sense of how the playability is out of the box and how the, uh, the articulations um, respond to the playing. So, you know, it sounds decent enough, but it really is when you turn on the smart delay, uh, you start to get a more convincing performance as, you know, you know, I talked about in the birth of the trumpet video, um, it does analyze your performance for a few beats and then goes through. So let's just stick with the legato for now and um, just improvise a couple of lines here. And uh, the, the articulations work quite smoothly as well. The only one that's given me a little bit of uh, trouble is the scoop. So I'll show you what I mean. Usually by default, the scoop on the real time setting sounds quite good, you know, like it scoops up into the note, but the scoop on smart delay seems to really lag behind a little bit. So it kind of sounds like this. So a regular C by default sounds like this, middle C. But if I want to do a scoop into the C, I get this. You hear how it's really slow, right? So if I do a faster performance with that, I don't really get to hear the, the scoop reach the C before the rest of the line goes. So that's the only thing that that's uh, miffing me just a little bit. And maybe there's a setting that I'm just missing to speed up the scoop there. Um, but that's, that's really the only articulation that was kind of giving me a little trouble. So why not use a, a famous lick, famous line, um, and just to give you a sense of how this works. And uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. Okay, so again, keep in mind that the sound is not lagging behind. It really is just starting four beats later, just because of the nature of the smart delay. And uh, some of these, like, da, 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 da. like I wanted to use a scoop articulation for that, but again, because of the aforementioned um, lagging behind of that articulation, uh, I just found that it didn't work as well in this context. So I just went with the, you know, just the notes themselves. Uh, just a couple little, you know, a little line here. Right, so you hear it sounds decent enough. And the thing is about the sax, um, it can go super smooth and very, very liquidy and very flowy. And um, the legato in this library is more pronounced and it feels like the um, the performer really made an effort to show the different transitions between the notes. So I'm thinking for some of the lines that are a little faster, that need a little more smoothness, um, if they're like here, you can turn up and down the legato speed, it looks like and uh, de depending on what the setting is. And then there's the crossfade for the legato as well, which I guess you can you can take a look at as well. But um, I'm, I'm tr also trying to find a way to make the legato transitions a little less pronounced, you know, um, so that when you actually go through and play a line that's a little faster and a little more melodic and moving, um, it doesn't jump out as much. And, and that's where the smart delay can kind of come in to help a little bit as well. So the faster you play, maybe the lighter you play, the the more responsive the instrument will get. And it will just analyze your performance to try to get you that best result possible. So for me, I think this instrument is the best um, kind of suited 
to these like smoky jazz lines that um, kind of are reminiscent of the, this background of the GUI here. It's kind of like blue stuff and uh, not not like super heavy swing type of things or like hard bop or whatever you call those genres that lot need lots of growls and all that type of things you know that that's a totally different genre of jazz altogether i feel like this library specifically caters to you know that that more classic style of jazz that's a little more moody and if you listen to the demos on the website you'll see exactly what i mean so yeah i want to thank uh trey again from straight ahead samples for sending me a copy to just take a look at and um, yeah, I've had a lot of fun with it so far, and hopefully if you're looking for a tenor sax, um, this one I think will fit your bill. If you're looking for that kind of really responsive, legato heavy type of um, saxophone. Of course, if you want to go super in depth and customize everything, you can go with audio modeling or sample modeling saxes and um, control it from there. But with real players and real samples, um, straight ahead samples are, uh, is doing some great work. So definitely check them out and uh, let me know what you think. Do you like the sound of the library? Do you like how you know it plays uh, and uh, the functions of it? Because uh, if you watch the Birth of the Trumpet video, it's very, very similar. So this is kind of like the next follow up. And then they're also planning on trombones and a lead trumpet and all that. So I'm super excited for those, uh, for, the, for my mock-ups. I'm sure it's gonna, you know, just make life so much easier because of the smart delay technology. So big props to you, straight hand samples again for doing what they're doing. So as a thank you for uh, watching this video, before you go on to give you my sample library buyer's guide, it's a totally free guide that goes over my personal favorite libraries to use on a daily basis for cinematic orchestral music. It goes over strings, woodwinds, brass, percussion, you name it, it's there. And I just want to give it to you as a, as a gift for watching the video. So it's the first link in the description box below. Um, thank you again for watching. I'll catch you in the next video and uh, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.